Hi, I'm so sorry. We have a storm going on here, and um, I can see that uh, I'm having uh, some issues with the computer. So I'm just going to kind of resume where I started, and hopefully some of you can jump back on again. So today we're talking about um, emotional viruses and how we come in contact uh, with toxic and hysterical or dramatic people. And basically what we do is we carry their drama and their baggage into our own lives. As I said, I mean, it happens to all of us, but as you become more aware and sensitized to how you're feeling in the presence of somebody, then you can stop carrying the baggage of other people into your life. And as we talk through here, uh, you can think about uh, you know, who those people are in your life and what happens inside of you whenever you have contact with them. So after a brief discussion about toxicity and so forth, uh, I'll, I'll give you some uh, suggestions based on the work that I do. So I'm Sana Carpalotti, and I help people with their current life struggles and even inherited trauma using uh, energy psychology, which is very different from traditional therapy. My motto is to get in and get out. Uh, so I, I work very quickly, uh, sometimes in as little as a session. So I teach, I speak, I lead retreats and offer private sessions as well. Um, so so let's, let's take a few situations that may have happened in your life. So let's say that a partner or a friend has repeatedly criticized you and you say nothing, but on the inside, you're simmering with anger. And then you complain about the behavior without a, re without a solution to a friend. So you are essentially are taking it in here and then carrying it forward and the burden kind of continues to be carried into other people's lives as well. Uh, how about a coworker uh, who leads a weekly meeting and is always late and you, and you get upset and then you have trouble focusing on the, you know, the task at hand. Yes, the behavior is disrespectful, but disrupting your con concentration is the outcome of your distress. Or how about uh, your mother can never be satisfied and you continue to try to please her. So you are entangled in her emotional stuff. So all of those experiences, and I'm sure all of you have it, your own personal experiences of how you are affected. So when you are affected by um, an emotional virus, you are affected by their emotions, their behaviors, lifestyles, and perceptions. So if you think about it, I mean, there are toxic people all around us. It can be a wild world out there. Uh, but it's our susceptibility that is more concerning. The question is, is how do you keep it at bay so that you don't internalize it and stress yourself out and then take it out into your life? Because what you know is that you can't usually control them, you can't heal them, and you typically can't stop them. So of course, you could ask them to stop, I mean, you can set boundaries, you can stay away from them. Those are all viable, good options. But it doesn't always work, especially if it's a family member or a co coworker, and somebody that you are in contact with on a daily basis. So let's take a look at who in your life can be toxic. Okay, so, I mean, it's basically anyone in your life or even a stranger, uh, family, friends, Facebook friends, co-workers, neighbors, strangers, and whether you realize it or not, me and you. Okay, that can be the hard part. For some people, uh, it's a personality trait. Uh, for some people, maybe they just had a difficult moment 
or they're going through a period of time where they're struggling, or there's a certain aspect of their life that uh, that is, uh, you know, that they have trouble discussing and they may become emotional about it and it sends them off on the deep end. So we don't always know, especially if you don't know the person well, if it's something that is a common trait or if it's situational. But the truth is, okay, we all make mistakes, we all act a little crazy at times, and sometimes we think we know what's true, but then we find out that we only had a partial view or a partial understanding of the situation and we overreacted. So at some point in our lives, we have all been toxic. Now, here's, here's, the, here's an important thing that I learned from Bert Hellinger uh, many, many years ago. Um, he is the developer of the work that I do, that in relationships, when there is an entanglement, when we catch a virus, okay, we are all innocent and guilty at the same time in our relational troubles. Okay, so there are some situations <clears throat> that have become a part of your life, especially, like I said, if it's a family member or a coworker. But when you have a pretty good idea, okay, how it's going to play out, because typically if it's a personality trait, okay, some things are going to repeat. Okay, well, sometimes it might catch you off guard, like an irate driver. Okay, so when you take on an emotional state of others, you're going to find yourself feeling emotional, controlled, sucked in, mirroring their behavior, saying things that typically, uh, that aren't typical for you, or uh, behaving in ways and responding in ways that can even aggravate the individual. Okay, so... Um, so how do you identify toxic behavior? So what you might consider toxic may not be considered toxic to someone else. So it can literally be anything. Okay, we might even be suspicious of someone who is showing love because, um, because it could be perceived as being manipulative. So sometimes the behavior is directed specifically towards you but sometimes it's just how they, an individual will relate to everyone, and it's not personal, although it's hard to, um, to, to, to feel, to, to know that. It's easy to forget that in that moment. Um, so it can literally be any bad situation where we feel like we lose our power and then we take on this baggage or distress of someone, someone else. So remember, it's rarely about you, but, but truthfully, it's who they are and how they relate. So you can mirror, carry, suck it up, internalize emotions, take pity, you can try to rescue, you might uh, blame yourself, complain. You might fake being nice, but you're simmering on the inside. Get irritable, tired, and even sick. Okay, especially if it's a part of your everyday life. So there's three ways that you can catch an emotional virus. Okay, number one is if you're stressed as you enter into a situation that may be potentially volatile. So you already carry into the situation a narrowed perspective based on what's happening in your life. And you are more open to carry what they're carrying. Number two, if you expect to be stressed by someone or a situation, let's say you go you visit a, a certain family member on the weekends, and you know typically that, you know, there's a bit of a pounding or they're emotionally upset and very negative about what they're saying. Well, if you expect it, then the tendency is for you to look for it. Okay, then the other piece is that you become stressed 
um, as the in as the interaction unfolds. So your stress can increase, okay, uh, and that all of these three things increase your susceptibility to carry their baggage, and therefore you become affected. They're angry, you become angry. They're sad, you take on their sadness. Um, they're complaining, you feel upset, and then you complain. Okay, you go to your mother's and you feel stressed before you get there. You just think about going to your mother's and you get emotionally stressed. So do you see how, you know, it's easy to kind of get involved in this dance? So the question is, is how stressed are you? What are your thoughts and attitude about an individual or uh, a certain situation? Okay, if you expect the same response and you do the same thing, then you're going to get the same desired outcome, okay, an emotional virus. So when you're stressed to, to some degree, you basically have opened the door to let them in. And that emotion that you carry creates toxicity in your body. See, it, an emotion is actually a chemical reaction in the body, and we become familiar with those. So do you know that every thought that you have, and when you engage and take on the emotions of other people, you are essentially releasing 14,000 stress chemicals in your body. And we often just think about adrenaline or cortisol, but there's a lot more activity going on from the heart to the brain and then down into the nervous system. Now, a part of the problem from my perspective is that we're taught as children to be nice, to not ruffle feathers. Oh, that's just Uncle Jim, and he doesn't mean anything that he says, and to deny, to never speak up. And of course, if you can't say anything nice, then say, no, then say nothing at all. I mean, those are all ways that we get sucked up and uh, avail ourselves to what someone else is, is doing or saying or how they're feeling. Now, I'm not talking about a narcissistic personality or when there's domestic violence. That requires a totally different level of strategy and action uh, than what I'm talking about here. That's a more extreme state. So you're gonna, so basically with everything that I've been talking about, you feel stuck and you don't know what to do. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, have you ever noticed that when you feel calmer and more connected and maybe even more grounded that you are less reactive, if at all? Okay, so sometimes some people or some things that normally bother you, they don't bother you. Okay, you don't even maybe realize that it's happening. Okay, HeartMath did, uh, and I'm a HeartMath coach, and we'll be going through their training, the, their advanced training program here shortly, but they did a fascinating study, and they have over about two, 250 um, uh, research uh, studies that they have done over the past uh, 25, 30 years to support how we stress in our bodies. So what they did is they set up a fake meeting with four individuals. Okay, so they were set to meet uh, for a supposed meeting on a distressing issue. Okay, so four people. So unbeknownst to one individual, three of the individuals were deliberately set in a state of coherence, which is heart, brain, and emotional synchronization and psychological synchronization. Okay, the other individual was not and really didn't know that this was going on. So as they moved through the meeting and those three people were able to sustain they, they, they sustained their coherence. The other individual's coherence shifted from dis-ease quickly from being stressed to flow and in harmony. So the coherence, 
the people who were coherent influenced his level of distress. Okay, can we do that? Yes, of course we can. So when I reference coherence, I'm talking about an internalized state that you create. And it's a balance between the heart, the brain, your physical body, and your emotions. Now, don't leave me yet because it's really a lot more simple than you can imagine. So basically what we're talking about is that there's flow. Now, when we go off balance, there's an, there's an energetic alignment that gets disrupted. So we, we, have ex, we experience uh, people who have changed our moods, right? Have you ever met up with a friend and um, you know, they're in a really good mood and they changed your state? Well, that's what I'm talking about here. See, and it all begins in your heart. Okay, so we are all energetically and electrically connected through heart intelligence, and we can activate that through greater, uh, toward greater coherence, love, and connection with other people. So the heart, the heart has like long and short term memory. Okay, we are all connected in, in an energetic field. And what you might not realize, have you ever noticed how some people walk into a room and you can feel them, and then other people are really kind of tight and constricted? Well, they've studied this, and what they found is that when we are, when our heart energy, which is the central rhythm setter of the body is is um is is synchronized is coherent that our energy literally expands up to 10 feet away from the body so you can see here how we impact and affect other people um by uh when we're in sync so the heart is actually um 100 times stronger and 5,000 more uh, times more um, magnetic than the brain. The brain actually only expands just a few feet outside of the head. So I know it sounds a little far-fetched because we believe that, that our connections are made through the brain and analysis, but when you have that gut feeling, it's actually heart, brain, gut that creates this electrical field or this sense of connection or knowing um, that we have in, in different situations. So the heart acts like a receiver. So when somebody's complaining or there's an undercurrent of anger, see, you're going to pick up on their incoherence and then their heart rhythms are incoherent and you can feel that in your environment but unless your environment is set you are going to um, kind of absorb it okay so if you're stressed already or and you join them in your stress then essentially you are taking on their baggage and we can easily get pulled in because we are so inter interconnected as a species so after such an encounter i mean you ever walk away from somebody you just feel exhausted or worn out uh, because either they talk so much and there's just all this stuff coming on upon you but the problem is this not only are you emotionally distressed you are producing those stress hormones and you can walk around and it there's actually several days of emotional weakening that can occur depending on the the power of that individual that it's kind of similar to becoming susceptible to a cold virus or, or flu. So what are, what are you supposed to do? Okay, you can become quickly coherent. So, so prior to a meeting, or if you're meeting with someone who's usually draining, or, or maybe they're negatively controlling, or they take charge in some way, or they just talk over you, um, you know, you can become coherent by 
focusing on the heart, and we're going to do it here in a moment, and to create flow and synchronization. And the more you practice it, you can literally create it in a matter of seconds. Okay, so so the, this information and what we're going to do is going to uh, create coherence in the heart to the brain and very powerfully influence the behavior because the brain will then communicate it to the body. Okay, so I want you to think about a situation where you um, feel like you get caught uh, where you have caught an emotional virus in the past. So just pick a situation or someone and just kind of notice, because remember, here you are on the computer, okay? You're not in that situation and you notice that you can generate some stress here. So, um, so I'm a believer that you set yourself up for your own success and what you want to achieve if you know a situation is going to be, whether you know a situation is going to be stressful or not. So I want you to notice how it feels for you. Now keep in mind that individual or that situation is not, it will not have changed, but you will change in terms of how you are present with the individual. Okay, so now, I want you to put your attention on your heart. The heart is located in the center of the chest, or you can just hold your attention here in this area. Do that now. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you are breathing in through the heart and then out through the solar plexus, which is right here. Okay, so you're breathing in for the count of five, then exhaling for the count of five. There's flow, breath into the body, breath out of the body. Imagine that your heart expands and contracts on the exhale. So you're breathing as if you are breathing in and out of this heart solar plexus area. The pulse and the rhythm of the heart kind of become harmonious and in sync fairly quickly. And the more you practice this, the more effective, the more quickly you are impacted toward creating this buffer, this space around you. So what I want you to do is I want you to continue breathing and I want you to inhale in through the heart for the count of five, okay? And then exhale through the solar plexus for the count of five. And we're gonna do this four more times. So inhale, just follow my hand on the inhale. And then exhale. And as we're exhaling, the energy of the heart is contracting, getting stronger, on the exhale, you are expanding that energy all around you, the energy and the intelligence of the heart. So two more breaths here. Inhaling to five, expanding all around you, and exhaling. Okay, now while you continue to breathe and hold your attention here, okay, I want you to imagine something that you're really appreciative of or something that you feel wonderfully grateful for or have love for in your life. It could be a person, it could be a situation, it could be a sunny day or the fact that, uh, you know, there's rain. Uh, any Thing. And what I want you to do is to just allow yourself to uh, presence that experience because you're essentially changing your hormones, creating harmony in the body. And I want you to hold this calm here in the heart, holding, holding your attention here while the mind is uh, imaging and creating a kind of like a mental movie 
or feelings of that experience, creating coherence in your body. Feel ease, create this coherence, you expand outwardly. Okay, now I want you to just put your hand here and I want you to take one more breath in, expanding your heart and exhaling. Okay, and as you inhale, you continue to create this expansive nature and it becomes even stronger and stronger. Now, if you put that situation outside of your space and let it run as it normally does, okay, just allow it to happen and give yourself permission to, to discover a solution, a different response, even if it's for you to step back and create a more expansive energy field around you. Keep breathing. Okay, some people like to create color around themselves or even have a feel of that energy field. Now keep in mind, this isn't woo-woo stuff. We are energetic electrical systems uh, within our body. And the, the recent research is showing this more and more. And the more important piece is that you have charge over how you manage for the most part you know this this uh, this field that exists within you and outside of you so if you have um any questions or anything you're welcome to contact me at any time my contact uh, uh, information is there or through Facebook. So the important piece here is to not allow your emotions and the, um, uh, the, the emotions of other people to manage you because the more that you manage emotions that are a chemical experience in the body, then you are going to be able to keep making corrections and adjust. We're gonna go deeper into this in, in my fall retreat in, in the fall. So when you just keep in mind that when you connect through your heart, when you remain coherent, you can also gain more compassion and emp empathy for that individual or make a really clear sound decision uh, from a more mature standpoint or viewpoint. Your perceptions change, your physiology changes. So you kind of separate yourself from their stress because the analytical mind is not where you're going to learn how to manage your emotions. So go to the heart, discover its intelligence, and live well. I'm Sana Carpalotti, and I hope to see you again next uh, Wednesday at three o'clock. And thank you all for coming back on. Uh, we had a storm just blow by here, and uh, I froze a little while ago. So thank you so much, much love. Any comments would be appreciated. Uh, I always like to hear feedback. Love to you all. Bye-bye.